Hi, and welcome to Scioto Trail State Forest. Today we're up on a dry ridge where this species does quite well. This is chestnut oak, and you'll often find it growing almost in pure stands on these drier type sites. And when the soils are this thin, they're not very tall trees. They tend to be limmy and not very straight. But if they happen to grow on a little bit more moist site further down in the valley, uh, they might be able to grow very straight and tall. Uh, chestnut oak often grows on these ridges with scarlet oak. And again, it is most common here in the hill country or the unglaciated portion of Ohio. Like other oaks, chestnut oak has a simple leaf. Um, this doesn't have the major lobes like we normally think of oak. It has more of a serrated or what we call a crenate margin, which means they're rounded teeth. These teeth do not have sharp pointed tips though. They're more rounded, so that puts it in the white oak group. Um, those leaves uh, tend to be about four to six inches in length. They're kind of oval and they are alternate like all the other oaks, so the leaves alternate on the twigs. These are all kind of bunched up towards the tip, but if you look closely, you can see they're alternate. Another great identifying characteristic for chestnut oak is like all other oaks, it has a cluster of buds. Think of that knuckle sandwich. These buds are pretty long and angular, so you're gonna have relatively long angled buds, and they're really light tan in color. The twig is a chestnut brown color. The buds are a light tan color. Um, the other great thing about chestnut oak are the acorns. Because it's in the white oak group, it only takes one growing season to produce an acorn. So we have pollination in the spring, the acorn matures, it'll hit the ground and normally before the fall is over, you'll have a root coming out. Sometimes they're out by now, I'm not seeing it yet on these, but they're a relatively large acorn. They're kind of football shaped and actually the color is pretty close to the color of a football as well although they can still have some yellow color to them this time of year. They're going to have a cap that only covers about a third of the acorn. That cap should have a little stalk, maybe a half inch in length that it's attached to. And then it's kind of a bumpy cap, light colored cap, but one of the good identifying characteristics, it's very thin along the edges. It's not rounded, it tapers and gets very thin along the edges. This is chestnut oak. Again, another great ID characteristic of chestnut oak is the bark. It's much different than most white oak bark. The other species in the group tend to be more flaky or platy bark. This has deep furrows, very deep valleys and very high ridges. And those deep furrows are very consistent from the base all the way up and out on the limbs. Um, again, this is chestnut oak. I learned it as Quercus prinus. Some folks learn it as Quercus montana but it is a very common tree on the ridges and drier sites in the unglaciated Appalachian Hills of Southern Ohio. Thank you, and please take at least part of your day to spend it in the woods.